IW is responding to us with a major DMZ update here and clarifying what this mode is truly all about. They saw people play it early, they saw the reaction to it, and we have a whole blog post to break down here on what DMZ is going to be like. And they also confirm, which I kind of already thought was going to be the case here, that DMZ is actually in a beta mode. The first time we're seeing beta attached to this DMZ mode. We'll go through all of that in this video. First up here, we're thrilled to have debuted our very first look at DMZ this week with streamers and creators at the IW studio, heading into War zone 2 launch week we want to dive a bit deeper into this exciting new experience so here's what players can expect here dmz is a dangerous diverse and deep open world experience where players can choose their level of intensity even in its earliest form the dmz experience is built for the most hardcore completionists with faction missions contracts world events stocking up the stash helping out other squads or causing chaos, breaking open locked areas, and much more. This living world has plenty to conquer on day one. This is definitely going against people that said DMZ was, you know, very boring to play and watch. This sandbox mode is where players of all skill levels can choose their own way to play and win. The goal is to loot up and get out alive. It's about exploring an active world of AQ forces and enemy operators, completing missions and objectives, exfiltrating with loot, cash, valuables, and rewards to build out your inventory for the next infiltration. Set your own stakes and ultimately earn some high-tier items for use across the rest of MW2 and Warzone 2. While players can choose how and where they engage, all operators must exfil into the Almazra exclusion zone to reap the rewards. Players will ultimately fight for the mastery of the mode by discovering all the experiences and rewards it has to offer. While DMZ begins in Almazra, no one quite knows where it made a lead. So again, hinting at a further evolution of DMZ outside of this Almazra map, maybe to Las Almas, another region seen in MW2's campaign, maybe somewhere else, maybe to Verdansk. Who knows there, but pretty interesting. Now for the stash and inventory, DMZ involves keeping a stash or inventory of weapons and other valuable items from the exclusion zone. Players will start with a small inventory of free contraband weapons. Contraband guns are only usable in DMZ, and if you lose them on the battlefield, they're gone forever. Weapons acquired from other players or enemies on the field are considered contraband after extracting with them. Call of Duty is about customizing weapons, so we still want you to bring those creations into DMZ, whether it's a personal modification or a weapon blueprint. So you can bring those over, of course. At first, you'll have one insured weapon slot for any personal loadout weapon or weapon blueprint. Additional insured weapon slots can be earned by leveling up with factions, and that's only in DMZ, of course. For those looking for an alternate path to unlocking weapons versus traditional weapon XP through matches should be excited to plan their infills. Acquiring a contraband weapon will unlock the base weapon in Gunsmith usable in multiplayer and battle royale. If you lose an insured weapon, remember insurance takes time unless you are willing to pay the right price. Extracted cash and valuables speed up the cooldown on these slots. Your stash also contains certain items taken out of the exclusion zone which could be put into your loadout and backpack for the next infiltration and give you access to special locations. Pretty cool stuff there. Your backpack fills up during a match. Operators can visit one of six dead drop locations to stash items for extraction in a later match. And of course, here's the first look at the marketing Warzone 2 DMZ, the first official DMZ logo, and then beta as well, which we haven't seen at all up until this point. And they definitely want to do that to clarify that, of course, DMZ is not fully finished and fully ready in its final form. I mean, that was pretty obvious, of course, watching the gameplay yesterday, and I didn't expect DMZ to release in this crazy new state. There were already leaks and rumors about it being a constantly, you know, updated and evolving mode that, you know, hasn't reached its full form yet, of course. So that makes sense there. So hopefully people, you know, cut some slack for them, but, you know, they still want it to be, you know, a bit better, you know, based on what we saw. And this blog post was definitely needed here, describing really what you could do and all of the possibilities with the DMZ mode. But some more stuff here. We have infill, loadout, and missions. DMZ is a trios-based mode with the option to play as a solo or duo by disabling squad fill. We recommend you start with trios as the Almazar Exclusion Zone is a dangerous place. To teach you how to play and give you those first rewards of DMZ, you accept faction missions. These are from our world's most powerful PMC groups, the Legion, White Lotus, and Black Mouse, with the Legion being your starting faction and the other to unlock by completing other factions missions. By completing a certain number of faction missions, you could advance up a faction's mission tiers. 
These missions offer significant challenges coupled with significant unique rewards. Players will infiltrate the exclusion zone with their chosen loadout, insured or contraband, or they could bring nothing at all. Sometimes all it takes is a pair of fists and a dream. The exact point of infiltration is random every time, ensuring that no two DMZ matches will be the same. To get more items, players will have to extract them out of the exclusion zone with their backpack. This will provide an experience for players to complete a supply run, as an example, in which players can complete a run to gear up for future deployment. In addition to the backpack, players can exfil from the world with on-soldier items, including backpacks, self-revives, armor, plate carriers, etc. This is critical for players looking to engage with high-tier enemies early in a match their next infill. Now, within the exclusion zone, let's go through some stuff here. Other than completing objectives laid out in the faction missions, players are also free to explore the exclusion zone to collect more items for their inventory and to take on optional assignments. And we saw a lot of that in the early gameplay a couple days ago. These can be completing contracts such as rescuing a hostage, taking down high value targets, or taking part in a world event such as activating a SAM turret or a UAV tower. The one problem we saw, a lot of people were saying they were doing these, you know, side contracts here, such as rescuing a hostage, but it was kind of anticlimactic because the hostage would just be an AI player and then you would fight a bunch of other AI protecting that AI hostage. Like it just didn't really make a lot of sense to involve some more real life players would be pretty cool. Maybe the hostage could still be an AI player, but you have another separate real life enemy team protecting that hostage. Or, you know, they're the ones that kidnapped that AI and they have to like, you know, make sure no one else res rescues that hostage. That'd be kind of sick. But again, we'll see very soon. Like Warzone 2, players can expect logical looting. Items exist in Almazra and places that may exist in the real world, such as medical supplies in a bathroom cabinet or hospital, and a police station or military outpost may contain more tactical gear, so that's cool as well. There are only a few limits to what you can explore in Almazra. First, locked spaces, which are special areas within the exclusion zone and strongholds guarded by AQ forces. Players must obtain keys to gain access to these high value places. Also, Almazra won't have a circle collapse, but players will need to monitor radiation as well as the occasional sand sandstorm we don't know yet what's causing this deadly energy and what operators may get from finding its source a future easter egg there i guess again there's no definite objective or path to victory here in dmz you're responsible for mapping your own success in the mode with plenty of rewards for your efforts double xp tokens calling cards weapon charms and other cosmetics and hopefully those rewards are a bit more grand as you grind more to dmz getting a couple double xp tokens weapon charms is good at first but if you're constantly playing dmz over and over and over again there should be some huge overarching reward that you get like some type of you know mastery camo or something there's some big reward that you get for you know playing dmz over and over again not dying for a certain amount of time etc that's just my idea there but let me know down below your opinions on that and finally they're saying the ultimate reward here is the m13b assault rifle this functional weapon a part of the bruin ops platform along with the new bass psmg can be yours across mw2 warzone 2 but DMZ is not the only way to get those weapons there, so I don't really consider that the ultimate reward, honestly. Uh, we have exfil here. Winning is determined by the player's choices and consequences that follow, but ultimately, exfilling from the exclusion zone is your main objective in each match. Part of DMZ's design is to make every match matter. Anything you get in DMZ that is in your loadout or backpack is lost upon death. Players can still be revived by their squad mates even after dying, although it will take longer than the usual down to revive. But if everyone drops, all that precious loot gets dropped as well. You know, more of that escape from Tarkov type of vibe. You have to make sure not to die there because you could lose all of your stuff that easily. And of course, again, the only exceptions are your insured weapons, which is a part of your stash, which you can keep. It'll be insured for future matches. And, you know, uh, of course, insurance, like we talked about earlier, takes time to get back. And the more cash you get, the more stuff you get, the faster that insurance will come back and bring your weapon back, I guess. So overall, that's it here with the DMZ. Of course, major updates are coming very soon for this mode. They had to make this. I mean, I wish this blog post was here when the mode was first revealed because I feel like people hopped on, played it for the first time. People were watching it and we kind of knew what the, you know, consensus was about what DMZ was all about from the rumors and leaks, but IW didn't really tell us themselves really what this mode is all about. So I feel like it created a lot of confusion as to what we were watching, what they were playing at that event. This blog post, in my opinion, helps out a lot. It describes really how this works, what you're doing, what the goals and objectives are. 
I still think that it needs to be improved, better rewards, uh, a bigger overarching reason to play and grind the mode. And of course, we'll talk about that very soon. We'll play for ourselves next week. We'll see how it is. Let me know down below your first impressions on DMZ. This update here, will you be playing the mode? Do you want more updates? Let me know down below. Be sure to subscribe for more MW2 Warzone 2 news update videos like this. Shout out to the channel members as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream. Peace out, guys.